Excuse me, is this the reading room? Yes, I'm Saad Manzul. And I'm Travis Howard. This is Reading Room Talk. Thank you for pressing play. Welcome, welcome. Welcome back, everyone. Oh, welcome, welcome. We got we got special, very, very special guests right here. Oh, we yeah. have someone who does everything behind the IR suite, in yeah. the IR suite, around the IR suite. <laughs> That's everywhere, right. Everywhere. <laughs> everywhere. So we got Gina Hurt with us today. How are you today? I'm fine. How are you all? Good, Gina. Good, all right. Oh, yeah. Good to have appreciate you. you making the time. I love it. I love it. So, you know, we usually ask what were people's uh, toughest class in uh, their training, but, you know, you're dual trained. You're a tech and you're a nurse. So tell us, what was your toughest class in either or both? Well, um, as, a, as a technologist, my toughest class uh, was physics. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. uh, I just couldn't get that natural science. <laughs> the laws and uh, the principles of all of the universe. Oh, it was difficult. It was very difficult. Yeah, it's tough. It's tough. It's mm -hmm. tough to get the concepts. And it's like, I feel like it scares a lot of people. So what did you kind of do to get yourself through it? Well, um, well, it, it was some self. Um, I, I had to do a lot of self-reflections. I had to do a lot of studying. I had to uh, take time away from, the, uh, you know, love to do as a as a young, you know, child and young person in uh, college. Mm -hmm. So um, it was up late nights, early morning rises. I mean, um, it, that that was a difficult. It was it was a difficult time. Um, just mm -hmm. to get those properties of matter and energy together. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you had to make a sacrifice. I had to sacrifice. Yes, I had to sacrifice. I had to, um, you know, things that I would want to do. And, and, you know, when I get out, of, get out of school, I couldn't do them. I had to stay home and yeah. stay in the books. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So you went to technology school. You went to radiation tech or radiology technology school first. Correct? First. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. yes. Very cool. Very cool. Yes. Where did you where did you where did you go? I went to, uh, it was called Shelby State. It was a community college in Memphis, Tennessee. Okay. Nice. Mm -hmm. Okay. Very cool. Very mm -hmm. cool. Mm -hmm. And you're born what? in Memphis. I'm born, uh, yes. I'm, I'm originally from Memphis, Tennessee. Yes. Yeah. Oh, that's cool. And your family's from there as well? Family's from Memphis. Yes. Mm -hmm. oh, that's really cool. So tell mm -hmm. us about growing up in Memphis. Growing up in Memphis. Uh, growing up, it, it was good to me as I look back on life. I, I mean, I guess it wasn't so good in other people's eyes, but it, that's all I knew. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, and like I say, being being raised as a single parent home and yeah. didn't have a whole lot. I won't say we were poor because we never went without anything. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. However, um, I didn't get all my wants needed. <laughs> I mean, met. <laughs> I didn't get all the wants met, but however, the necessities were always there. Yeah. Uh, Oh, that's good. That gives you a lot of perspective, too. Right. That's right. Really good. And, uh, yeah. And not only, like, huh? I'm sorry. I say Memphis is, you know, very African-American town as well. Very African-American. Um, however, at the time when I grew up, it, we were more like um, the country or we were not the city. Uh -huh. see. So um, things we didn't have what others had as far as uh, even just simple things that people have four and five of uh, bathrooms. Um, mm. you know, we grew up with bathrooms outside. Oh wow! So uh, that that was a, a challenge, and I can remember moving into our first new home at the age of nine, and it was like, wow, we had something we could push something that would fly. <laughs> at nine <laughs> years old. Oh wow! You better, you better edit that. <laughs> no, you remember? Wow. Because I I'm wondering, you know, you go to high school. Mm -hmm. And you go from a situation where, you know, you might have lived in a rural area mm -hmm. and now you're, you're going to go do something that's cutting edge in, in medicine and technology and radiation, mm -hmm. radiology technology school. So how, tell me how that happened. How'd you get introduced? Well, how I got introduced with radiology was the fact that as a kid, I stayed uh, broke up. <laughs> I always had a broken <laughs> bone or cut or something. <laughs> so falling oh, out of active. trees, you know, very active, falling out of trees, you know, swinging across the, um, what we call <laughs> ditches, uh, uh, you know, um, I guess, uh, <laughs> I guess, uh, um, what, what would you want to call it? Filled with water? Um, no, you had, the, we had them too. Oh, yeah. Being filled with water. And so we thought we were Tarzan because at the time, that's what we could see on the one 
couple of TV channels that we had um, was to swing across the vines. And yeah. so we swing across the vines and I don't know why I will always have to be the one to hit the stump in the, in the, <laughs> in the water, <laughs> uh, break a leg, break a toe, break whatever. So I always was um, the one that was at the hospital getting bandaged up and, and um, like I say, with the broken legs and things and having a wow. cast on. And so I, it, you know, as go, going and, you know, having x-rays done, I became interested in x-ray. Okay. Wow. Yeah. That's so funny. Wow. <laughs> However, even at that time, that wasn't my first, even though that wasn't my first choice. Mm. I always wanted to be a nurse. Okay. Interesting. Okay. Okay. Well, that comes back into play, of course. So, mm -hmm. so tell mm -hmm. us, so like, when did you kind of decide that you wanted to just try the x-ray school thing? Was this like in high school or afterwards? Well, it was, it was afterwards. I had gone to all my life. I, well, from growing up, I wanted to be a nurse. I wanted to be a nurse. That's all I could think of was being a nurse. I was always the one that bandaged up everybody. It was always the one that cared for even the older people, the younger people. They would, you know, come to me if someone had a cut, you know, I'd bandage it up. You know, I thought I was doing something. But anyway, I went on to college. I went on to college and um, that was my first choice was was nursing. Yeah. And, yeah. and what school did you go to? I went to um well, I still was going to uh, Shelby State Community College, going to the, the nursing program or trying to get into the nursing. Program. And the door was closed and um, I couldn't get in. Mm. So you had to set, you know, you had to have your plan A, B and C. And so the next plan was to be a, a radiologic technologist. I said, mm, X-ray. I stayed on the table all the time. I know about X-rays. All they, you know, they take pictures, they take pictures. <laughs> so I said, OK. Um, so then I put down my second choice. And of course, I, I was accepted into the radiology program. That's awesome. That's awesome that you had the exposure to like mm -hmm. you know, know that x-ray was something that you could Right, consider. right. Mm -hmm. X-ray wow. was out there. And when I talked about x-ray through the family, I can remember people saying, what is that? What are you talking mm -hmm. about? Mm -hmm. So no one knew what radiology was all about. I mean, if I sometimes if I say getting an x-ray, they would understand that. But when you say radiology, no. <laughs> Interesting. Interesting. Cool. Yeah, I know you were a good student in high school, correct? Yes, I was. I yeah, was a yeah. good student in high school. There were no games in your house. You had you oh, had to perform well. No, there was there was no games, and and the fact that um, I can remember as just as a little kid growing up and uh, being told that I wouldn't amount to uh, I won't say the word, but anything. Mm. And so I heard that from an older family member talking about my mom's kids because my mom you know we were out of wedlock and all this kind of stuff and single parent and yeah. i guess they just felt like we weren't we weren't going to be anything and you know and they had it going on and as it turns out turned, turns out the tables turned and her kids ended up being and theirs didn't <laughs> yeah no, it's, so, it's a marathon mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And it sounds like you use that as fuel. And that's exactly what i did that is exactly what i did i use that as a fuel um, that just got the ball rolling. And I, and I said, um, you know, at an early age, I heard it. That I can remember being around nine. And I was like, you know what? I'm going to be somebody in life. I'm going to be somebody in life. And so I just, I would come home from school. I would read. I would read. I wouldn't even go, I wouldn't go outside. Even though I, I you know, there were times when I did go outside, I always end up broken up. But anyway, um, I said, I'm a dream. I'm dreaming big. I'm going to study hard because, you know, I can't believe that she would even say that I, we wouldn't amount to anything. Yeah, and wow. so that was fuel for the fire. That was fuel. And so I just stayed focused. I just stayed focused on what I wanted to do. And then I, I can remember by the time I was 13, that's when I started working. Mm. 13 years old. 13 years old, start working and start. I get I my money home to my mother just as I, you know, like a, a husband or I, you know, guess because my dad wasn't there. So, you know, and, and that's how I made it work. That's yeah. awesome. What type of work did you do? I actually, uh, what I did was it, it we worked, uh, well, in the summers, we worked for this, with, it was a CETA, C E T A program. So I did that in the summers. Um, they would give kids jobs you know, school, school, I mean, school age kids jobs. Uh, and then I also uh, did, um, I would clean houses. So I was a domestic engineer, <laughs> as they call it. <laughs> yeah, right. okay. I would, uh, I, you know, uh, yeah, so I would do those things, babysit, whatever it took, just to make money legally. 
<laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but that's, that's a great feeling to bring home money like right. that age to because your family. I was mm-hmm, I was raised by a mother that that meant she didn't play. She was strong. She mm-hmm. didn't play. You didn't get in trouble. You didn't mm-hmm. do those things. Uh uh-uh. uh. You just didn't. Yeah. You just didn't do that. So um, that's that's what I did, and and uh, I guess I studied so hard when all this came about. When when um, that family member mentioned that we wouldn't mount to anything, um, I studied so hard that I graduated high school a year early. Wow. Yeah. I graduated high school a year early and went on to college. Now, you said the door was closed to nursing school. Was it just the time that you applied or was it anything else? I I said that to didn't want to was it was a it was pretty much, I'm sorry, racial. They only Mm -hmm. they, they would only let just one or two of us into any kind of program at that time. And we're talking about that was in 1982. Wow. Wow. It was still bad then, even though racism was so tough. I grew up with a mother that didn't, we didn't bring that in our house. We didn't talk about it. We didn't mm-hmm. talk about racism. We didn't talk about that. So um, they just didn't let you in. You just couldn't. So um, I, I just continued and went into radiology school. So I just took my, my, sec- my second choice and went on into radiology. And then by the time I was in radiology, I can remember about six to me and told me that they accepted me into the nursing program. However, at, well, however, at the time I had a friend, my best friend had was in radiology school, so we went together. So I just couldn't see her graduating first before me. <laughs> oh. <laughs> so, so I said, I'm just going to complete it, then I'll go back to nursing. I'll go back to nursing. I'll go back and do nursing. They lost one at the time. Right. So yeah. um, I went ahead it went and completed the radiology and yeah. was a radiologist i mean x-ray technology for about 11 years before i completed nursing wow now where did you work when you finished uh which 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 job when you finished uh, x-ray school when i finished x-ray school school there was no jobs out there so i had to end up driving like um 40 miles 50 miles a day one way to go to a little health clinic Oh, so wow. I worked there at the health clinic until I got on at the hospital. So mm-hmm. I got on at the hospital at um, it's called Baptist East. It's still there, actually, in Memphis. And oh, I worked yeah. there. Right. I worked there until I finished um, uh, nursing school. Wow. Now, so it could have been easy for you to say, right, uh, I'm done with nursing. I don't mm-hmm. want I'm good. I got a job. I'm on my way. But no. you didn't let that go. Did you know any nurses in the family? Did you? Uh, okay, so I did have one nurse in the family. Um, and I can remember as a little kid, like I said, I was always the one that would banish everybody up. And and I watched her and I and I just always admired her because she had that white dress on, those white shoes, that white hat. And I just was like, oh my God, I want to do that. I want to be like that. <laughs> you know, I want to be a nurse. So she inspired me um, in nursing. So God that's God. how I end, ended up there. But I knew my eye. I, I, I had that eagle eye. It was set on nursing. And mm-hmm. I knew someday, somehow, I would be a nurse. There you go. But, oh, and my so mother good. knew that. But I, I hate the fact that she didn't see me as a nurse because she had passed on. And mm-hmm. But I, I told her I was going to be a nurse. I was going to be a nurse. So. I, yeah. yeah. And you did it. You're doing it. You're doing mm-hmm. it. You're Absolutely. Many times Absolutely. Over. Yeah. Um, yeah. So how did you, uh, how did this transition go? Like, when did you, like, you were working as an x-ray tech and then decided. I was working. Time for- I'm sorry. Yes. Working as an x-ray tech. Actually, um, it, um, funded my nursing. Okay. Nice. Nice. So I worked on the weekends, 40 hours on the weekend. Wow. Um, full time and went to school for- a mother full-time wow that's a lot of full-time jobs right right Mm -hmm. (laughs) that's awesome though and no physics in nursing school it sounds like well no we didn't really have physics um (laughs) no yeah i mean you well you know there's a a portion of it um, yeah but not like radiology when yeah yeah it's all about it Mm -hmm. but how did you how did you enjoy nursing school 
Nursing school, believe it or not, was more of a breeze than radiology school. Believe that. Yeah. Yeah. I was gonna ask you, what was your most difficult course in nursing school? Well, um, I thought at one point because it was uh we called it dosage and solutions, which is a form of math. However, it was mm -hmm. different because I all my life I always kept things in my head and I couldn't write them down. And mm -hmm. I know that's bad. <laughs> so my problem was I and so mm. they always thought that I was cheating. So I said, well, oh, put me in a room by myself. And, wow. you know, there was no cameras back then or whatever. But I said, put me in a room by myself. And and some some problems, I just can't write down these formulas, right? So yeah. I guess that's all a part of the, some of the physics stuff, too. But anyway, yeah. um. So that that was that was a, a I, I can remember that was probably my hardest time was because because of DNS we call doses and solutions but it's called I'm sure it's called something else now but I see I see wow so so after after nursing school what was your next step after that so after nursing school I we well I went to a, this is the thing I'd gone to uh, when I applied for nursing, I applied for it was called Memphis State University. Now it's, of course, the University of Memphis. So I applied there and I was going and um, it, they were so it was such a, a again, um, just, I guess, racial undertone. They didn't want us into the program. So they was talking to us in such negative ways about you should try something else. You know, the counselors trying to discourage you. And so I just thought, I'm not going to sit here in University of Memphis and take these courses and sit here and wait on to be accepted into the nursing program. Let me just go ahead and go somewhere where I can get. So I chose at that point to transfer and go to method nursing, which is okay. a lower degree, which is a lower degree. Um, however, uh, we still take the same NCLEX test to become nurses. So mm. uh, this is in Memphis know, as well. This is in Memphis as well. So gotcha. I transferred from uh, Memphis State University and went over to uh, Methodist School of Nursing. And it was a it was a school of nursing and they were uh, attached to the Methodist hospitals. So that's what I did. I ended up getting a diploma in nursing. So that means I had to go right. back to school to finish, you know, uh, to further my education. So when I got when we got out of school, we were trained as nurses into that school program because you went straight to clinicals your first six weeks. And so you were there the whole time. So that means that when we got out of school, which was a plus, mm -hmm. um, we knew nursing. Whereas the school that I was that I was trying to go to, the university, um, they had to get out and learn to be a nurse. We had already learned to be a nurse while we were in school. So the job market was out there for us, and they were trying. They were snatching up all of the um, the, the uh, diploma nurses because diploma nurses were nurses. Yeah. Uh, you know what I'm saying? Because you were experienced already. Yeah, yeah. Uh, the first year, yeah, definitely. right. So my first job um, in nursing was at the trauma center at Methodist Trauma Center. Oh wow! <laughs> so, and not very many people get into trauma, and at the time when I did get into that get into trauma, there was only three black nurses in the trauma center. Wow. Out of how many, you would say? Out of 50, 60. Wow. Maybe, in Memphis. Maybe even more in Memphis. And, this, and, we're, talk, and we're talking now, I graduated um, nursing school in 1997. Oh, that's crazy. And it was still the same way. Wow. As it was when I had previously graduated in 1986 from 11 years prior from um, university. I mean, I'm sorry, from Shelby State Community Even, College. In you know, when you started in 82, you said it was mm -hmm. kind of similar too. Nothing had changed. Yes, nothing had changed. And I, I think we were raised to just live it. You yeah. know, you just, yeah. just live what was going on. You're but right. you pivoted correctly. You like you left Memphis State and went down to Methodist to get, you know, mm -hmm. what you needed to get done. And mm -hmm. you already had the confidence mm -hmm. of like finishing x ray school. Mm -hmm. So I feel like, you know, you probably fit in very well at the trauma center there, being a nurse and right. having the x ray, mm -hmm. you know, experience. Mm -hmm. Right. So you're one of three out of 50, 50 plus nurses. 
How was mm-hmm. that? How was I mean? I I can I could imagine maybe you had some some encounters during your first yeah year. Yeah, yeah, so. yeah. There were numerous encounters, um, but again, the way that I was raised, and that's all I knew was Memphis and the way things were. You just Push it to the side, sweep it off your shoulder, and you move on. Yeah. Mm. You know, you move on. And you know, um, we didn't, my mama said, my mother said, you don't, you don't ha- you don't um harbor over over foolishness. That's what she would always say. You don't harbor over foolishness. Mm. You know? yeah, I like that though. I like that a lot. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> she said, uh, you are another way around it. And Which so you did. Yeah, so you always found another way around it. It's no, you know, it's just, you know, she said, just it, it, no street. There's always streets to the side. Now she she never said things like parallel or or you know uh, things as parallel to things. But she she was just the word the words that she would say was like, wow. I, I didn't I didn't understand a lot of it until I was older. But you know. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh, that's, that's awesome. That's, that's, uh, yeah, you're a success story. You know, the fact that you even made it there, that's, that's awesome. And then like a lot of times that kind of, you know, if you're not able to kind of push it to the side, then you can't make it out. You know, you kind of get stuck on like that. Exactly. You know, yeah, so. Exactly. And she said, I always say you can't live in the, you can't live in the past. You can't live in the past. You can't live in the past. And we was like, why would she say you can't live in the past? <laughs> we didn't know. But, you know, I understand. You know, I understood as time gone gone on, what she, what she always would, you know, would be saying. What she yeah. meant. What she meant. Yeah. Mm-hmm. How long did you work in the trauma center? I worked in the trauma center about three years. Mm-hmm. About three years I worked at Methodist University. Then I started um, traveling. Okay. okay, okay. Traveling nursing. And um, so once I started traveling, um, my, well, can you explain that a little? Because I feel like people talk about travel nursing. Travel but, nursing. Like, okay. what exactly is it? So, travel nursing is taking the time. Is going to well, actually, when I started traveling nursing, I was a, a strike travel nurse. Nurse. So I would be deployed to strikes. Interesting. Okay. I would go into when hospitals would go on strike. Someone had to take care of the patients. So they would they would uh, hire us, and we would go. The agency would send us there. Mm-hmm. And so you end up working there on, on contract or as long as there's. So after yeah. about three or four assignments, I just decided that I was I was going to stay here in Washington, D.C. area. I see. Because I was going to say, I feel like being a hot, you know, like that can be like a hostile environment. Working in a, uh, it, well, a you place. know, mm-hmm. it was a hostile environment. However, those nurses knew that someone had to come and help them out to take care of patients. Mm, that's a good so, point. Um, so when I got to the Washington, I think the center, yeah, they had that big strike. They had a big strike. And so I ended up staying here and meeting friends and, and I just, just hung out wow. here in the DC area. And then not only that, financially, it was it was better than what I would what I was making in Memphis. As a matter, matter of fact, it was double the salary. Wow. And I feel like you probably saw more people that look like you as well. And exactly, it was like a melting pot. It was like a melting pot. So when I came here, I felt, I felt that I felt home. I mean, I felt a sense of relief because again, like Dr. Howard said, when he came here, he saw black, black people, people of his color, of his skin color, uh, Mm -hmm. you know, the same in, in a place, you know, where he's come to. That was the same here with me coming from Memphis, where it was Lily white and then coming here to where there was a melting pot of all different kind of people right. mm-hmm. and i just i was like wow this is awesome and i would just walk down the halls of the hospital center just smiling speaking to people because I'm I'm telling you. <laughs> yeah just happy like oh my god yeah, just happy oh my goodness people, people recognize me they're not exactly. looking at me like i'm crazy like yeah. what are you doing here this is this is home this yeah. is home this is home and so i just i just kind of stayed around here and then um and so I ended up, I'm still here. Yeah. That's awesome. So it makes sense, Gina, because you know what? Throughout the pandemic and all the challenges that we face in interventional radiology, mm-hmm. you have been thrown into departments where they, it's, it's been tomorrow. You know, you're just scrambling and, and scraping by to take care of patients. And you, mm-hmm. and you, 
you're always calm in that situation. You always keep a level head and you always keep your eye on the prize. So mm -hmm. it makes sense hearing that like, while you were traveling and being thrown in these situations that you could use that skill set and just apply it to your everyday. I think it makes you a stronger nurse and, um, and, and I, it makes sense to me now. Oh, okay. That definitely translates. I mean, those are the skills that you picked up from an early age to be able to like, kind of get dropped off anywhere and just, you know, kind of take your mom's advice and just keep going. Don't live in the past and make sure that, uh, you know, don't harbor the, the foolishness, which is awesome. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Very cool. Very cool. So how did you, I mean, you kind of sound like the perfect mix of the person that would want to work in interventional radiology. So how did you kind of figure that out? Or how did you make yourself into uh you know, that situation. Oh, okay. So, well, as you know, as an x-ray technologist, we used to have uh, special procedures. Mm, right. Yes. We learned, we heard about that. Right. We learned, we learned. Oh, okay. We had special procedures. <laughs> so it was an area where, um, you know, of course you, you did the, the special procedures, the different types of, and so when I was an x-ray, I didn't care for that portion of it. Mm -hmm. And I was like, mm -mm. I said, because now, because I didn't know I wasn't into nursing. So I was just into radiology and I just, everything had to be sterile and this and that. And I always felt that I was going to touch something or, you know, so I just didn't like that portion of it. So I said, let me just go with the, the more of the dirty part of radiology. <laughs> Let's go to the B <laughs> the <B's. laughs> yeah. and just to try my x-rays. So that's where I, I, I um, stayed and, and, you know, and did my, um, got my experience from that portion but I always knew in the back of my head what they did in special procedures. So then when I guess a couple of years before I got started, because I've been here in, radi in interventional radiology, I guess since we've been open in this department for about 10 years. Mm -hmm. But even before that, I started hearing about the dual. I, I could probably do radiology and do nursing. So I said, OK. And then at that point, I was like, well, I know radiology I, I, and I know nursing. So when jobs came available, I said, let me just go ahead on and apply there and then learn about the different things that they're doing in radiology. And got here and it's like, wow, the in interventions that they're doing is just awesome and, and saving lives in, in that respect. So I just I just stuck. I just wanted to be. I don't know. I just end up here. <laughs> <laughs> the, uh, the career molded to you. I mean, yeah. You're literally the perfect person to like be working in the suite. Mm -hmm. it's, true. it's true. And you weren't afraid to learn about it. You saw something new, something different, mm -hmm. and, and and you applied and you thought, well, maybe that that will work for me. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. And, and it, it turned out to be a good fit because that, you know, not only do we do this podcast to share your story mm -hmm. and Inspire others, but I also like to give folks their praise and, and their respect for the things that they do, mm -hmm. because um, Gina is a wonderful nurse. If something goes down in the department in interventional radiology, you want Gina on your team because she will get it. To, if a patient's not doing well, you, where's Gina? You know, it's like you know <laughs> that she's going to be cool on the fire and she knows what she's talking about. She's sharp and she's going to make sure that things are done the right way. And um, and that the outcome is as best as we can do, you know, mm -hmm. um, at that time. Um, That's awesome. and, and, and I think her experience in Memphis and, and resilience that you've demonstrated, you know, you, you're also able to create a warm environment for your patients. Mm -hmm. um, no, no one walks in the department that's a stranger to Gina. Mm -hmm. She will she will talk to everybody the same and she'll tell the patient come in there all grumpy. Don't you come in here with that foolishness? <laughs> and I'm looking around like, do you know that person to be talking to them like that? But you know, she it doesn't matter. And you and lo and behold, you look at them and they just simmer down. And I'm like, what is this superpower this woman has? Um, and I just I don't know. I love having you on the team and I, and I love working with you and I think you do a wonderful job. I was telling Sai when we did the, the history, um, the history segment in, in radiology, you reminded me when I saw the first African-American female um, technologist Ooh. and she was also a nurse. Who, Ms. Rose Peaks. That's oh, right. yeah. Rose Peaks. Shout out to Rose Peaks. I thought of you instantly and um, I don't know. I just want to I just wanted to take that time to give you, give you your respect and your praise as, mm -hmm. as you are due. 
Mm-hmm. Absolutely, absolutely. Mm-hmm. Coming from where you came from to being where you are, it's just it's an amazing, amazing story. So, mm-hmm. wow. Make it happen. Yeah. Patients appreciate it. We all appreciate it. Mm-hmm. That's right. Absolutely. Talk to us about what else you're doing, Gina. Mm-hmm. Oh, so <laughs> so I have uh, I created a um, a salve to help yeah. with soothing the body the natural way. Mm-hmm. And so I, I, the product I was putting, you know, letting different ones try or what have you, and it, it proved to be success. So um, in December of 22, I opened up my um, a little business um, called Hurt No More. There you go. <laughs> and Hurt No More it. is a salve that anyone could, could purchase, could use actually uh, on their body anywhere. It's external rub mm-hmm. and it just helps soothe the body. Um, I, I can't say this, but it, it helps. It helps with different types of pain. Yeah, mm. it works. It works it well. Works. I've tried it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, <laughs> that's awesome. pain. So yeah, so that's what I'm I'm d- doing now. And oh, I'm just doing everything. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> so where can we get this? Where can we? Uh, oh, the you can, is there a phone can number? This, can we do? Right from the website. It's called hurt h u r t t n o m o at mm-hmm. uh, dot com. Uh, you can purchase over the website or. You can call 901 482 8400. There you go. To order your salve. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Hurt no more is the way to go. <laughs> Support that business. <laughs> oh, that's so awesome. That's great. That's great. So, so tell us, let me, let me ask you. So, what would you tell someone who's kind of like, you know, in x ray school or in nursing school having a tough time trying to make it through? What would you tell them to kind of motivate them to make it through? Well, first of all, I would tell them to have, you know, have patience, um, uh, have that willpower, well, actually set their small goals, really. Um, I think that any any process that you're going through, I think if we set a goal and um, we can just clearly uh, define that goal and measure those and measure it, then that, that builds success. So if we just stay at it, don't mm-hmm. give up, don't um, don't take um, again. I'm always saying about negativity. Don't let negativity things slow you down. Take those negative things and, and you know, turn them into positives. And, you know, just if you fall down, you get back up. That's right. You got you to fall down, down, you get back up. Like our songwriter, Donna Clark McClurgan said, we fall down, but we get back up. That's right. So, mm-hmm. you know, that's the truest statement. So yeah. just, you know, just keep your eye on the prize. Yes. Yeah. You know, look to the future. Don't, don't look backwards. Look forward. That's so, right. Can't live in the past. Can't live in the past. You live in the past, you won't get anywhere. That's right. Mm-hmm. So, Gina, the family member of yours, I forget, she said she was a nurse and she was an inspiration to you. Did she help you along the way? Matter of fact, she did not. She did not help me along the way. I just looked at her as that's what I want to do. Wow. Um, she she never i mean she she was away i mean she was in she was in memphis for a minute but then she moved away so she didn't help me with my studies but i guess you would say if i needed anything i would you know i could ask her about it or what have you but it just wasn't like that i think i just saw that image of her and knew that that's what i wanted to be was that nurse and i would see her go to work and come home or whatever whatever yeah, well actually you know some of the stories she would say let me take that back y'all i'm sorry she would come come and tell you stories of things that have had transpired, and I was interested in it. So um, I, I would be the one to listen and, and hear what she had to say. So, yeah. yeah I, I, Sometimes that's all you need. You just need some, mm-hmm. see somebody doing it. Mm-hmm. She was doing it, and that's what I wanted to do. And uh, so, yeah. Well, you you're yeah. doing it now, and I'm sure you're inspiring a lot of people to do it as well, you know, whatever path. So this has mm-hmm. been uh, awesome. We appreciate you making the time with us. This mm-hmm. was, uh, we've learned so much. Until next time, everybody, stay low and keep fire. And keep on. All right. Please subscribe, rate, and review on iTunes or wherever you get your pods.
Yeah. Yeah. Now, you just speak so highly. <laughs> it's true, hey, man. It's all authentic here. I ain't, I ain't got no. I'm speak the truth. You know. <laughs>